What's up, y'all? It's your guy, eBay Fight Predictions, in the building. And this is your UFC 298 full card predictions. Ilya Taporia versus Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal card. I can't wait for it. But before we kind of talk about the card, obviously, your betting breakdown, your full card predictions will be coming out soon. Uh, giving you guys my picks, obviously, my bets. Uh, obviously, all my bets will be coming out at the end of the video. Um, you'll see them. I, I usually give a picture. Uh, if, I, I'm, if I'm not fully, like, you know, transparent in the video, you'll always see a printout of all the bets I'll be going with um, for uh, for the card. So uh, at least at the end of the video, just to let you know. But before we get into that, also like, comment, subscribe. Let's get this eBay fight prediction nation growing. I know you guys can see I'm a little clean shaven right now. Uh, but it is what it is. What can I do? <laughs> Baby face eBay in the building. But um, yeah, man, like, comment, subscribe. Let's get this eBay fight prediction nation growing. Um, UC 298 will be the comeback. We've had some pretty bad cards in terms of betting. Last two cards were not the nicest to me, but you UFC 298, I just have a feeling in my tummy, we're going to get it back in blood. We're going to get it back in blood. So, you know, after the Joe Pfeiffer uh, <laughs> fraud check that I had to endure watching and the Andre Philly destruction that I had to endure watching, we're going to get this one back in blood. But yeah, man, uh, let's get into the card now. Um, we start off the card with Andrew Lee uh, versus Random Mavericks. This is all topology order, by the way. So if it's not the correct order, A. Blame topology. But hey, um, really good fight in the female division. I have nothing on this fight. Um, I, I lean towards uh, Miranda Maverick, but I think Andrew Lee, I mean, three fight skid is going to have a lot of motivation to go win a fight. It's kind of one of those weird things where she might end up just going out there and just beating uh, Miranda Maverick, um, you know, based on the fact that she needs to for her job. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. But I think Maverick. Um, should be able to, should be able to out wrestle here here and should have the grappling edge here. Um, obviously, I think Andrew Lee is the better striker out of the two, if I would say. But yeah, that's probably the only thing I'd probably give her. And she's thirty five, so it's not a good look too. But yeah, I I do lean towards Miranda Maverick here probably by decision. Uh, we know it's a female fight. Every female fight goes to the decision uh, unless you're like Jessica Andrade. So yeah. <laughs> um, next fight, Val Woodborn versus Oban Elliott. Oban El Elliott obviously coming from the Contender Series. Um, obviously, Val Woodborn, we, we all know him for uh, <laughs> the Bo Nickel fight, but it is what it is uh it happens to the best of us um i think this is gonna be a good scrap i lean towards oba and elliot very very slightly wouldn't be surprised if val goes out there and smokes him um oban does get hit a lot uh and he's not the most technical guy but he's kind of a longer guy here he is obviously going to be the taller guy um he, he has decent output decent cardio he's the younger guy going into the matchup um better record more fights more experience so i'm gonna rock with oban here but yeah man his container series performance it was it was a brawl man it was a good 29 28 kind of good scrap i mean they were going back and forth but he had the better conditioning good takedowns uh that he was able to land really good takedowns where you go for the cross and kind of get like an ankle pick it was kind of cool watching but um yeah man I, I think the the guy from wales gets the victory here probably by decision but should be a barn burner honestly i think Elliot, we know what he brings to the table. We know what Val Woodburn brings to the table. I could see a finish here, but um, I, to stay on this, you know what? Fuck it, man. I'm going to take Elliot. Actually, I'm changing my pick mid. I'm taking Elliot by um, second round TKO. I think he gets him out of there. I think ground and pound or a standing TKO, maybe in the clinch. But um, yeah, it's, it should be a good fucking fight, though. Should be a really good scrap. I have nothing on the fight. Uh, I think it's a bit of a a weird one where I, I i could see i really i don't know why the guy uh, oban leaves himself so open sometimes man and i don't like that um and uh, yeah man I, I wouldn't put nothing on this fight i have nothing on it um next fight josh quillan versus danny uh barlow um it should be a good fight i, I think danny barlow is the he's the rifle favorite also i have nothing on this fight as well um that's why they'll never remember my name man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? that's why they won't remember my name man but hey besides that hey it is what it is um uh both guys heavy hitters 
I always lean towards the tall, long, and lanky guy in matchups like this where I feel like, you know, that length, that reach, that jab is going to be super important here. Um, and I think Danny's going to be using that. The left-handed guy, um, he has a lot of good knockout power. Obviously, we, we saw what uh, Josh Berlin did to fucking uh, Jason Witt. So both guys can swap. But I just that 80-inch reach compared to 72 is just going to be such a big obstacle for Josh Berlin to overcome. And I just don't know if he will. Um, I'm going to be taking... Danny Barlow here. Um, I actually think he, he Josh Collins is pretty tough. It's a pretty tough guy. I could see him just going out there and jabbing his face off. But man, you take a sustained uh, beating like that from that kind of power. I might see Danny Barlow going going out here and knocking this guy out. Um, I could see a decision. His last decision was a year and two months ago, so it's not like he can't do it. Um, so, yeah, but he has a lot of knockouts, man. A lot of knockouts. And I, I think he gets him out of there in the third round. I'm, I'm taking Danny Barlow by third round TK. It's going to be a fucking beat down. And I think Josh Collin is going to get whooped. But should be a good fight. Um, next fight, Ming Ye Zhang versus uh, Brennanson Rebo. Uh, yeah, man, I, I remember Zhang from knocking out Tuco. Uh, Tuco is one of Brendan Allen's friends. I was actually like kind of hyped to watch. Tuco fight and then Zhang just goes out there and knocks him out. Now, Bredesen Brito, obviously contender series guy, uh, looked really good against uh, Bruno Lopez, knocked him out, hammer fist, fucking destroyed. It was brutal, brutal KO. Um, obviously, both guys really big dudes. Bredesen, he has the long arms here. And you guys know I'm big on reach, I'm big on length because of the jab, the movement, it, you know, long, tall, lanky like guys are really hard stylistic matchups, right? But I think Zhang is the better striker out of the two. Uh, I think he's the quicker fighter. And I, I just think what he did to, to that boy Tuco was pretty impressive. Even though it was a year and eight months ago. So it's, it's a big thing, though. He was a year and eight months ago. And, you know, Bruno Lopez is, is a little more active. His fight was five months ago. So that also does put that into perspective uh, how long ago that was. But he's 25 years old, young guy, improving. Um, so I, I think he's going to go out there and smoke this dude, uh, Brennan and uh, Rebo. Uh, should be a good fight, though. I, I, I can't wait for it. But, yeah, uh, I'm going to take Zhang here um, by second round TKO uh, over Brennan and Brito, or Rebo. So, but should be a good fight. I have nothing on the fight, though. But, yeah. Um, next fight, uh, Renia Nakamura versus Carlos Vieira. Uh, I do have something on this fight. I, I think Nakamura is the man. He is the future. Uh, I got Nakamura in a parlay um, with uh, Ilya Teporia. Uh, three units on uh, Mr. Ilya Teporia and Renew Nakamura in a parlay. Um, I think both. And I probably got a unit on Renew's uh, money line. He's a big favorite here. Um, but yeah, man. Um, I, I think that it should be a good fight. Um uh, well, a good beat down, <laughs> to be honest, but should, should be interesting. Nakamura, great wrestling, man. He's just phenomenal. Really great fighter. Uh, and I, I think, I think Nakamura, man, he, um, I, I think he gets the submission victory here. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say by second round submission, it's gonna be my, it's gonna be my pick. Uh, but should be a great fight. I, I, I can't wait for it, but yeah, man, should be a really good one. Should be a good scrap. Um, but yeah, I got Nakamura here. Fucking trash and carlos fiera i think there's just levels to this game and yeah carlos fiera ain't there so yeah uh next fight uh marcus rujillo de lima versus justin taffa um good fight here i i, I slightly favor de lima um has fought the better competition yeah he's 38 but it's heavyweight um he's a little faster than taffa you know we've seen taffa's you know weaknesses and stuff like that jared vandera exposed him the body kicks the length the lateral movement he doesn't do well too well against and i i think delima can probably do the same here i know delima might meet him in the middle and that might be a mistake uh i think tafa has the better chin out of the two but i think delima is the more skilled fighter i think skills pay the bills and i think he's just going to be the better fighter here overall but it should be a good fight though uh, nonetheless so yeah I, I can't wait for it uh but yeah i have delima here Probably by decision. Toff is pretty tough. He's a pretty tough guy. I think leg kicks are going to be big here. Um, uh, there might be a, a bit of a grapple on edge here. But yeah, I, I got Delima here winning the fight. I know he's coming off that KO loss to, to Derek Lewis. But I don't think it means too much in this matchup. But yeah. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. That's going to be the pick. Uh, but yeah. Uh, next fight, Amanda Lemos versus Mackenzie Dern. Uh, I got a unit on uh, Lemos here. Um, I think Mackenzie Dern is cooked, bro. Um, I 
uh, yeah, Lemos got fucking her ass whooped by uh, Whaley Zhang, but I, I, I think, dude, what just got uh did to McKenzie during that. <laughs> Classic, bro. That was a classic, bro. That's a classic right there. I enjoyed every second of it. Um, and um, I just think Lemos has the power, has a good enough takedown defense to keep this up. I think she's gonna smoke Mackenzie Dern, finish her where he stands. Should be a good fight, though. But it, it, here's the thing with Mackenzie Dern she doesn't have an ability to get the fight to the ground at a high rate. Her wrestle's not good. She looked like a complete idiot in that just gonna fight. And I think it continues. But she does have a good ability to win, lose, win, lose. So she just lost her last fight. I think she's due for a win. But I just think Lemos is a, another echelon above her. And I, I got Lemos here um, winning this fight by second round TKO. But yeah, should be a good fight. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to see uh, Mackenzie Dern get smoked again. So it's going to be a good one. Uh, so, but I do got a unit on Lemos uh, on her money line, baby. Uh, Anthony Hernandez versus Roman Kapila, man. Uh, you guys know how I feel about Anthony Fluffy Hernandez, he's going down, baby. I got two units on Roman Coppola by second round TKO. Uh, body work, I think, is going to be big. I do have a breakdown. It's coming on on Friday, so it's going to be uh, pretty long before you guys see it. But, you know, I'll give you guys like a quick summary of the breakdown. Um, I, I just honestly feel like there's just this this first layer of defense from Anthony uh, Hernandez is just horrendous. You saw Kevin Holland kind of take advantage of it. He does not defend shots properly. It's weird. You even saw in that first first round of the Edmund Shabazian fight, he does get clipped. He does get hit. His body's very weak. Uh, Roman Kopilov has made a career off of body kicks to set up high kicks. I think Roman Kopilov finishes him to the body. Uh, and I think it's the same damage that Roman Kopilov is able to build off of him. Uh, he can bring it to the second round, and I think he gets him out of there. Yeah, I know Roman Kopilov had losses to Carl Roberson, Albert Durayev, wrestling, wrestling this, wrestling that. Fluffy Hernandez ain't him, never been him. Uh, never will be him. So, and Roman Kopilov is a legitimate prospect at 185. So, yeah. Uh, Sorry for I, the interruption, y'all. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Phone was dying. But yeah, Roman Kopilov is going to get this done in the second round. Um, next fight, Marab Dabashvili versus Henry Sudo. I do have a breakdown on this. I do got a unit on Henry Sudo. And I also got a, a unit on this fight going uh, to the distance. Um I, I think Henry Sudo gets this done by decision. I think Sudo is the better fighter. I know he's older. I know Marab has looked amazing. Um, but I, I think Sudo, based on his accomplishments, based on resume, based on his last performance, he looked really good against Aljamain Sterling. I thought he arguably won. Um, and it was a good competitive fight. I do think Marab has outperformed Aljamain when they have had, when they've had common opponents. So I do know that is a fact that I'm looking at. But besides that, though, uh, Frankie Shans was able to beat, uh, uh, Marab Davishvili, why can't Cejudo? If Ricky Simone is able to submit uh, Marab Davishvili, why can't Henry Cejudo? I think Henry Cejudo, really good leg kicks, um, really good distance movement, spacing, um, and just an understanding of MMA is on another level. I think he's going to develop a good game plan. I think he knows that if he can't win this fight, he ain't getting no title shot. It's potentially could be his last fight ever um, in the UFC. So, if he doesn't win, yeah, it could be a wrap. So I think he knows the stakes going into this matchup. I think he's going to go out there and just put a whooping on um, Rabbed Up Philly. Wrestling should be fun, but I just think you, you saw Rab have a close fight with Cody Stamen, you know? So it's like Rab ain't this fucking demon that, you know, like he ain't this guy that can't be beaten. So I, I think even though age is a factor going into the matchup, I know Rab's in his prime, um, but I, I do think Sudo can win the fight here. So it should be an interesting one. Big title implications in that one. Uh, next fight, Jeff Neal versus Ian Machado Carey. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I, I got Ian Gary here, um, sadly, by <laughs> by decision. I, I think he's going to outlast Jeff Neal. We've seen Jeff Neal have problems with long fighters like um, you know, Magny, uh, Wonder Boy, Stephen Thompson. Um, like I said, Pat Koch will be coming uh, if Ian Gary somehow loses this fight. Um, Ian Gary, you better watch out, bro, because Pack Watch is coming. Pack Watch is coming. Um, so you better not slip. You better not fall. You better not let Jeff Neal fucking knock you out, because Pack Watch is coming. I've been waiting to do a Pack Watch, and I'm, I haven't had the opportunity. We're two months into the new year. Ian Gary, don't be the first guy to get the Pack Watch, man. Don't don't be the first guy. 
It, it sucked. It, it would really, really suck if it was you. It really, really would suck because I'm going in. <laughs> I'm going in, boss man. But I'm gonna keep my mouth shut, man. You know, I, I don't, I don't need his wife suing me. <laughs> I don't need his wife suing me. I just, I'm just joking. Let's talk about the skills, though. Uh, Ian's actually, besides all the nonsense that surrounds him, he's actually really good. Uh, and he's a really good striker. Uh, again, really good distance management. I think Ian's biggest kryptonite is grappling, and that's something that. Jeff Neal doesn't have offensively. He's not an offensive grappler. He's more of a defensive grappler. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's going to take a grappler to go out there and really smoke Ian Gary. But, I mean, Jeff Neal does have power, though. Uh, Vicente Luque's performance still was uh, all-star level, uh, fucking iconic. But at the end of the day, um, I think Ian's just too long. I don't think he's going to be in his face like Vicente Luque. He's going to try to jab him up. Body kicks are going to be probably going a lot to him. Um, and I think Jeff Neal is weak to the body, so we could see a finish, but I don't have nothing on the fight. Uh, if I did, the side is probably Jeff Neal. I would, I, I would encourage you guys to go hit that Jeff Neal money line. Um, and, or, I mean, yeah, just Jeff Neal in general. Um, uh, I just, even though I do think Ian Gary's going to win, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's you, you, you get you get a better payout from uh, Jeff Neal, and also he has a good chance of winning this fight. It's not like he can't, you know. I just think Ian, it just he has too many components of the kryptonite of Jeff Neal, but Jeff Neal has a good chance. He has the ultimate equalizer. He has power. So I mean, I would I wouldn't be mad if you you went to that side, but I'm personally not. Um, next fight in the co-main event: Robert Whitaker versus Paulo Costa. I got Paulo Costa here by second round TKO. Man, we saw what Drukas did to this man. I think he's completely done. I think uh, Robert Whitaker is done. So I think Paulo Costa is just going to do a repeat of what Drukas did. I think he's going to bully this dude. I think he's going to corner him. I think he's going to break him down, and I think he's going to defeat the evil Robert Whitaker. And I'm just letting you guys know, man. I'm letting, I'm letting y'all know, man. I'm letting y'all know, man. Don't get low. Don't, don't let me get the three pack watch coming in, man. The Robert Whitaker, Ian Gabe, Marab special, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Y'all, y'all be done. Y'all be done. Y'all be done. Y'all be done. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I go more in depth in my breakdown on why I feel the way I feel. Um, but yeah, I, I think Paulo Costa wins this fight. I know some people feel like Robert still has something left in the tank, but again, he's had eight fights. He's been hurt or knocked down at least eight times in those eight fights. Not in every particular fight, but in the span of eight fights, he's been hurt. He's been knocked down seven times in the span of eight fights. All right, he's been knocked down twice against Yoel Romero. He got knocked down twice and knocked out by fucking Adesanya. He got dropped by Darren Till. He got hurt by Jared Cannonier. He got knocked down against Adesanya in the um in the rematch. Okay, that's a fact. And he got smoked by Drickus Duplass. That's fucking eight, motherfucker. So you know you go look at it. I, I'm not gonna argue with you, but yeah, I, I got a unit on Paulo Costa. Uh, yeah, big big betting card here. I'm gonna be putting a lot a lot of money. A lot of money on Paulo Costa. And <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm not. But uh, overall, I'm going to be putting a lot of money on this card. Um, and in the main event, though, Ilya Tapori versus Alexander Volkanovsky. I got a film study breakdown coming out on this. I want you guys to really check that out. Really went hard. Really went in depth in that breakdown, put my all into it. So I want you guys to go check that breakdown. It's a really good breakdown. I got 10 units, one of my bigger bets of the year on Ilya Tapori, Ilya Tapori's money line. I got Ilya getting it done in the third round via TKO. Um, I think Ilya Tapori is going to knock out Alexander Volkanovsky. I think he's going to pass a torch to Ilya Tapori. And I think Ilya Tapori is the man. Um, he's going to be your new champion. I'm sorry, y'all. I know you guys are not going to like this, but yeah. It sucks for me to say I love Volkanovski. I'm going to have to see it live, but Volkanovski is going to knock out. I'm sorry to say this, y'all, but it's a fact. And if you don't like facts, go turn around <laughs> and turn this video off. <laughs> because Volkanovski is going out cold. I, as much as I love Volk, and he's the man, and I haven't picked against Volk in a very, very long time last time i ever picked against volk was against chad mendez and Ilya toporia he's gonna finish where chad mendez couldn't this is how i feel i think it's just a very similar stylistic matchup uh to that chad mendez fight and Ilya toporia doesn't get tired uh, and i would say even Ilya toporia is better than chad mendez so 
I think Ilya gets it done. I think Ilya is your new champion. Um, and I think Volk had a great run. He's a he's a great fighter. Well, in my opinion, the gold of 145. I know it's debatable, and people will say Aldo, but resume wise, I actually think I think Volk got him beat. I know he has fucking the um, the title defenses, but still, um, you know, here's the thing. I'm gonna keep it simple like this. Volk had to surpass Max. You know what I'm saying? Sorry for the interruption. Again, the phone is dying, so I don't really have too much time left on the phone. But yeah, like I said, keep it simple. You know, Max Holloway, he had to give the belt to Volkanasi at one point. You know what I'm saying? To give up that title reign. And I think Volk's going to have to do the same thing with Ilya Tepore. He's going to have to give that belt. He's going to have to give up that title reign. He had a great run. I can't wait for the fight. I can't wait to watch it live. But yeah, 10 units on Ilya Tepore. Uh, probably a unit on him getting it done in the third round via TKO. But yeah, it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, that is it for my predictions. Like, comment, and share the video. Let's get this eBay fight prediction nation rolling. Love y'all and goodbye. Uh, and I'm out of here, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, love y'all. Goodbye. YouTube channel. I'm going to go check that out. And, uh, Hey, subscribe to eBay's Fight Prediction. Let's keep the eBay Fight Predictions nation growing.